This is Sam Weigel with V1 Rotate, and this week we're talking about how to apply for a pilot job online. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is like some rando old dude telling you how to TikTok or do it for the gram or, I don't know, breathe? Nobody born after 1990 needs any explanation of how to do anything online, right? Well, Actually, we are talking pilot jobs here, which means the process isn't quite completely modern. You know, aviation is a fairly conservative business. I would say it has one foot rooted in the past, and pilot hiring is no different. Culturally, if not technologically, there's still some holdovers from yesteryear, when pilot applications were done on Scantron sheets. For starters, you're not going to apply for pilot jobs on Indeed, Monster, Glassdoor, or LinkedIn like everyone else. Um, yeah, you are if you aren't an airline nerd. Okay, good point, me from yesterday. Yes, if you're looking for a corporate pilot job, there are a ton of those on the general job posting websites plus a bunch of aviation specific ones, like abjobs, bizjetjobs, willflyforfood.com, climb350.com, nbaa, aopa, wow, this list is actually really long. You happy? Yep. Hey, they start World War III yet? Nope, still here. Great. They give that asshole the Ceausescu treatment yet? Nope, he's still here too. Time's ticking. You know, oil keeps going up. These people aren't going to have anything to apply for but food stamps. <laughs> God, enough with the pessimism yesterday, me. I mean, come on. Historic pilot shortage. Why don't you get sleep in a haircut will do you some good. Where was I? Oh yes, application websites. The corporate guys use everybody. A lot of airlines, on the other hand, use just one website, airlineapps.com. That's a lot of airlines. Who are we missing? Huh. American Airlines and Southwest both use pilotcredentials.com. FedEx has their own internal website. So does UPS. Ugly, but functional. That tracks. Hi JetBlue. My old pals at Horizon and Alaska. And last but not least, Spirit Airlines. Most everyone else uses airline apps, including just about every regional still standing. Let's have a moment of silence for the late Great Lakes Airlines. Now, on one hand, it's kind of nice to have one website to apply for a bunch of different airlines. This is enough of a dull, pain in the ass process that it's good to avoid doing it too many times if you can help it. However, airline apps does charge you for that convenience to the tune of $69.95 a year. Now, if you're hard up for cash, you can apply to individual airlines for free. The process is basically the same and you could print off the application to the first one and use that to fill out the subsequent applications. That's still a pretty cumbersome process and if you're casting your job search net pretty wide, you're probably better off just paying the membership fee. Alright, so I've decided that I've had enough of my life of leisure at Nameless Major Airline and I've decided to go back to my roots as a regional airline pilot. Sadly, Compass Airlines is no longer around. So, I've decided to apply to their last remaining step sibling, GoJet. This is a bit ironic because 10 years ago, while I was flying for Compass Airlines, GoJet was sending me recruiting materials. Mind you, we were owned by the same guy. I think at one point they even sent me a Starbucks gift card. Um, thanks guys. The first thing you want to do before you even start the application is get all your information together in one place. We're talking FAA licenses, medicals, FCC restricted radio telephone operators permit. You do have that, right? Up to date logbooks, driver's license, passport, address history, employment history, educational records. Ideally, you'd keep a lot of these records digitized and stored in one convenient spreadsheet or document to reference throughout your career and back that up in multiple places. All right, so now we're ready to roll on up to airlineapps.com, click on the GoJet icon, and double check the requirements. Ah, sweet, direct entry captain. We have those at Nameless Major Airline too. It's a pretty sweet way to be junior forever. Well, looks like I qualify, let's apply. If you've never used airline apps, you're going to start by entering your contact info, choosing a login ID, password and PIN, accept the terms of service, choose your desired level of harassment, and then let's begin. I'm not going to make you watch me fill out the entire application, that would be excruciating, but I will talk about navigation and a few potential gotchas. On the blue fields to the left, you'll find headings and subheadings that link to the various sections of the application. You can also fill it out from top to bottom by saving as you go and then clicking next page. 
The sections from my personal data all the way down to my references are common to all airline apps applications. So if you pay for a membership, you'll only have to fill those out once. Each airline also has its own addendum you'll access via the job targeting or my addendums links. If you fill out one application for free and then decide to purchase a membership, that's no problem. Your information will be carried over to new applications. You can purchase the membership under My Account Upgrade Membership. For the most part, the application is self-explanatory. It's monkey see, monkey do. I want to talk about a couple important sections though. Under Personal Data, the TSR section covers major crimes that will exclude you from a CETA badge and therefore from airline pilot employment. Hopefully, you have not been convicted or been found not guilty by reason of insanity of any of these crimes, at least not in the last 10 years. The non-TSR section, however, covers all criminal convictions in the last 10 years, including misdemeanors. These exclude traffic violations, but would include things like DWIs or DUIs, as well as, say, that minor in possession from your college years. These won't necessarily exclude you from employment, but they'll definitely come up during the interview, where you'll be given the opportunity to share how you've learned from the experience. The address history section also goes back 10 years. Three points. Don't include your current or permanent address. There should be no gaps in dates, and while in college, you can use your parents' address. Education is straightforward, except be sure to include professional development in your educational history. This includes non-collegiate flight schools. Your driving record in fraction section, unlike the criminal history, has no 10-year expiration. Use a little common sense here. I certainly don't remember the particulars of the tickets I got in my teenage years, and they're no longer on my driving record, so I didn't put them. Anything on your record, though, should be here. And then, in the criminal section, you're asked about DWIs, DUIs, and license suspensions or revocations. There may be some duplication from the non-TSR criminal section above. Employment history is another section that's not just 10 years, it's your whole life. However, the entries that really matter are your flying jobs, because they form the basis of the PREA search. That's the Pilot Records Improvement Act, which requires air carriers to contact a pilot's previous employers for at least the last five years and obtain training and qualification, disciplinary, and termination or resignation records. Two points here. It's really important that there not be any gaps in your employment. If there are gaps, you'll have to explain them here and provide a reference later in the application. Secondly, if you're like me and are an aviation angel of death, you might have some defunct employers in your wake. I have four. Assuming you don't know if someone is still maintaining career records, just put the company's last known address and phone number. Your prospective employer has to make a good faith effort to obtain records, but if they don't get them in 30 days, they can still hire you. The PREA process is currently being replaced by a master pilot records database, which should make the defunct employer problem a moot point. Filling in your flight time is probably the most frustrating and time-consuming part of this entire process. You'll enter it by aircraft model. This is where I hope, for your sake, that you use an electronic logbook. It makes this process so much easier. A lot of instructors like to start you on a paper logbook because it makes endorsements easier, and that's fine, but as soon as you're done with training through, say, commercial multi-engine, just go ahead and go digital. It only gets harder the longer you wait. A couple of points about entry here. Dual given is not included in PIC time. You have to split it out. Dual received is also split out from PIC, so if there was instruction where you also log PIC, you need to enter it as dual student time only. All of these columns should add up to your total time. When you are done entering all of your flight time by aircraft type and also by flight condition and instrument approaches, review your totals. If you entered everything correctly, the grid here should match your logbook totals. If everything is not within an hour or two, figure out what went wrong. You'll be bringing your logbooks to the interview, and any discrepancies between them and your application will be a red flag to the interviewer. You should have at least three references, with at least two of those having flown with you in a professional capacity. 
These people can also write you a letter of recommendation, but that's really a separate thing. These are folks that the airline can call up and ask about you. Absolutely ask them to be a reference before you put them down. This is also where you provide unemployment references if you have any gaps in employment so they can verify you really were out of work and not just say, fighting for the Taliban. Okay, we're down to job targeting. I'm a cheapskate, so there's only one company here. With membership, you can target multiple airlines. For each of these, you need to fill out their addendum. Among other things, this is where you'll solicit letters of recommendation. This is an opaque process to you. You just enter the email and wait for your contact to fill out the LOR. I will note that if your contact works for your targeted employer, it's best that you use their work email address. Two last steps. First, validate your app. Honestly, this validation is very basic and will only alert you to huge glaring errors. There's a lot I've left incomplete on this application and yet they're not flagging anything. So what you really need to do is click on the company name and display a printable copy of your application. Print it. Go over it with a marker looking not just for incomplete or incorrect information, but also spelling, grammatical and punctuation errors, and inconsistent formatting. Get your most anal retentive friends to review your app with a fine tooth comb. Then, and only then, hit the publish button. Once you've applied, you should update your application often. I'd suggest once a month, on the same day of the month. It's a great way to demonstrate to recruiters both that you're organized and that you're serious about the job and it won't be a waste of their time to invite you to interview. Now, some companies do still like to see a cover letter and I'll be showing you how to write one on the next installment of V1 Rotate. Catch it here at flyingmag.com every first and third Friday of the month.